It's so wonderful to be joining together with all of you today from these holy banks of Mother Ganga, from the lap of the Himalayas, and joining together with so many of my sisters and brothers and close dear friends coming together from all over the world. And this is really the key. Our world is without limits. The limits are those that we impose by our minds, by our ways of thinking, by our ignorance, by our illusion. And so to come together today and to share from so many different perspectives how we together can live beyond these limits how we can live in the truth of who we already are, which is boundless, ceaseless, infinite. There's a, a beautiful prayer that we chant that says, Asatoma Sadgamaya, Thamsoma Jyotirgamaya, Mrityordma Amritam Gamaya. And it means, oh God, lead us from the falsehood of separation into the truth of oneness. Lead us from the darkness of ignorance into the light of truth and wisdom. Lead us from the identification with this small, temporary, ever-changing existence into the true awareness, the true identification with the boundless, ceaseless, infinite soul. That's who we are. And I begin with that because, A, that is what gives us the experience of the truth of being beyond limits. It's the only way. The physical body has limits, lots of them. The only way to go beyond the limits is to stop identifying with that which is limited. So it's not about increase my skills, increase my capacity. I mean, that's great, sure, by all means. Learn lots of skills, increase your capacity, of course. We've got a body, we've got brains, we've got intelligence, we've got initiative, we've got all of that. By all means, use it, enhance it, develop it. You're a tool, you're an instrument of God's grace. Polish that instrument, make it be the best it can be, absolutely and recognize that it's not through that instrument that you're going to experience infinity. Because that instrument, no matter how well polished, has limits. That which is limitless is the soul. And another way of thinking about the soul, thinking about the truth of who we are, is love. The truth of who we are is love. Love is the energy, that shakti, that literally creates and is the world. Love is the petals of the flowers opening up in the morning as the sun shines on them. is the way that Ganga flows and flows and flows. Love is the trees that blossom and give us fruit or flowers, oxygen. Love is the energy of the universe. It is that core spirit, soul of who 
who we are. And that is why love is the answer. And that is why love is so important. A lot of us think of love just as an emotion, something I feel for a person, but it's not. Love is energy. It's just that that being is the one who catalyzes the turning on of that love manufacturing plant inside of you. Because in love, we go from being just this physical small thing to being expanded. And that's true, by the way, even on the, the level of just one being loving another. Think about why. Being in love feels so good, right? Think about the words we use to describe love. They're all words of expansion. We speak about melting and merging and swimming, and we think about or we speak about volcanoes and fireworks. Nobody ever talks about being in a box of love. We talk about rivers of love, oceans of love. Never heard of a box of love. And we expand in love. We lose that sense in love of where I end and you begin. And that's why it doesn't matter who you love or what you love. It doesn't matter where you begin. Even if the only experience of love that you can muster at this point is love for your pet or love for a family member, love for a tree in your backyard. Don't worry. Because all forms of love take us back to God if they're real. Think about it. Think about loving even one being, whether it's a spouse, whether it's a child, whether it's a parent, if you really love that one being, what you realize is that what you love about them is their essence. How many times has their body changed since you started loving them, right? How many years have you loved them and how many times during those years has their body changed shape, changed form? But you still love. In fact, usually you love even more. Usually love deepens with time. So the form keeps changing. Recognize that if it's really love, and not just lust, it's of the essence. You wouldn't love someone any less if, God forbid, they got into a car accident and their face was all bruised up and so they no longer looked beautiful. You wouldn't love anyone less if God forbid they needed a kidney transplant and they got a new kidney and lost the old one because it's not their kidneys that you love. It's not their face that you love. You may also enjoy it. You may also appreciate it. But you wouldn't stop loving them. What you love, if it's really love, is the essence, means the soul, spirit means the divinity, means God. Doesn't matter what you call it, but recognize that whoever you love, whomever you love, whatever you love, if you really love, you're loving God. And that's what's so beautiful about being in love, is it gives us that experience of the truth of who we are, which is expansive, boundless. That's why, as I was saying, it feels so good. And we're always trying to get back to that experience. But sadly, a lot of us try to experience it in ways that are not so helpful, not so skillful, not so efficient. We eat a lot. We shop a lot. We buy a lot. We do a lot. Thinking that if I somehow stuff my physical stomach, with food, that I'm somehow fuller, more expansive. 
my stomach is expanded, I'm expanded. Or if my closet is expanded, I'm expanded. If my possessions are expansive, I'm expansive. No, no amount of chocolate cake makes us connect with the truth of who we are. No amount of shopping puts us in touch with the truth of who we are. But the urge is good. We're just going about it in an unskillful way. And all I have to do to know, to experience that sense of real expansion is a spiritual practice that gets me in touch with the truth of who I am. And perhaps the easiest of those spiritual practices is to love, to really deeply love. As you're interacting with that being, recognize that it's the essence you love and allow your soul to connect with their soul. Because that's the beautiful piece. In order to connect with their soul, you have to go at it from your soul. Body can't connect to soul. Body can connect to body. Lust. Mind can connect to mind. Drama, intellectual exercises and experiences. But on a deep spiritual level, to connect with their soul, you have to come at it from your soul. And that's why being in love gets us in touch with the truth of who we are. So I'm a very big fan of love. But again, it doesn't have to be romantic love. And of course, for those of us who have chosen a chosen a path of monasticism, it isn't romantic love. But regardless of what path you've chosen, regardless of what your life dharma is, grab the opportunity to experience love. Be love. Let us really take this time to commit to feeling love, to being love, and to expanding in love. Because when we do that, then we become assets to the planet. People who are in love are assets. Think about it, right? A friend or a coworker falls in love, everyone knows it. People in love are just nicer to everyone. They're bigger tippers, they're the ones who help people, right? This is where in offices all the time we say, oh, somebody must have had a good weekend because they're suddenly offering to do other people's work, offering to take people out to lunch. Being in love is great for us. So let us commit to really loving. That we need to let that love expand and touch all and help all and heal all. Because all of creation, the rivers, the mountains, the trees, all of the species with whom we share this planet, all of our sisters and brothers of every color, every race, every religion, they're all embodiments of the same divine spirit. And so our love has to extend to them as well, which means we care for we serve, we protect all of the earth in our actions, in our decisions, in our choices. As we expand, our love embraces and embraces and embraces more of creation. So much love to all of you from these holy banks of Mother Ganga. And I pray that one day very soon we're all able to sit here together. And until then, I'm so glad to be joining you today. When we come together as love in love, there are no limits. <laughs>